Okay. So good morning, everyone. Um, so great to see you all here at 8.30 in the morning, really. I uh, didn't expect so much support, I would say. Um, so my name is uh, Professor Pilar Sanyama. I'm based in London, the UK. And I'm actually going to talk about something very interesting, and that is um, getting the most out of two different treatments, and that is combining the microneedling with what I would say regenerative medicine, which will also include exosomes. So just a little bit of a warm-up. Uh, microneedling, I think pretty much um, all of you know about it, and I would imagine that most of the attendees here at this conference in some way or another are using microneedling. It's something that's been there for many years, a very common procedure, and it's actually quite a, an affordable and accessible uh, procedure to many because it has many advantages, um, affordable to the doctor and to the patient, and also the ability to treat all different skin types and many different uh, anatomic locations. Um, in the literature, you might come across a term that's called percutaneous collagen induction therapy. So that might be the more medical sounding name of uh, microneedling. And that is because the, the mechanical injury that you induce into the skin stimulates wound healing. And that wound healing will ultimately lead to better outcome in, in terms of the collagen and elastin. So if you think about it, you're pricking the skin, you're getting this pinpoint bleeding, you're getting the release of the growth factors, and then you get into this wound healing cascade and ultimately you get better collagen and elastin. So this is why the term percutaneous collagen induction therapy, because as you uh, pierce through the skin, through that mechanical wounding, you ultimately lead to collagen uh, stimulation. Right, so when to use microneedling? Well, the list is growing literally by, by, by the day and there are so many conditions and, and this is by no means um, you know, a, a, a fully inclusive list of what you could do. Rejuvenation is probably one of the commonest ways. So fine lines, wrinkles, dilated pores, just, just making the skin feel and look younger. Scars, whether it's traumatic scars, burn scars, um, acne scars, but even interestingly, also in pigmentation, and there are a number of studies that um, sorry, there are a number of studies that showed that actually by just using the microneedling alone, uh, part of it stimulates that transepidermal pigment loss. But you also just as you remodel the dermis and, and improve the quality of the dermis, you also decrease that pigmentation. So especially from the sub-Indian continent, there are many papers looking at using microneedling in the management of melasma. But what's also interesting is the combination of using the microneedling with some of the brightening and lightening solutions and agents that we commonly use. Instead of injecting them, we can deliver them in a homogeneous fashion by using the microneedling. So we get the benefits of both the microneedling effects on pigmentation in this case, as well as delivering the molecules. Uh, this is one of the uh, a few papers on the device that I'm gonna be uh, covering, which um, is always good to see uh, clinical published papers on what we're using. So this is the device that I'm talking about from Campomats, made in Italy. So it's an, an Italian uh, microneedling system. And what is unique about this is that you have different types of wounding injury to the skin. So you have what we will call the medical needling rate. So you can go from, as you can see, 0 0.15. So that's very, very superficial, very much the uppermost layer of the epidermis, but you cannot go all the way deep into the deep dermis by going deep down to 2.5 millimeters. So you can dial in how deep you want to go. And how deep you would go, well, depends on a number of fact factors, the anatomic location, thickness of the skin, but more importantly, what do you want to achieve out of it? Is it collagen stimulation, dermal wounding, where it will gonna have to be deep, or is it just perhaps uh, delivery of molecules or just um, epidermal renewal and uh, scratching really the surface of the skin. And that's why there's another cartridge, which is for micro pricking. And you can, if you look at the micro picking, pricking in terms of the depth, it's actually not deep at all. It's up to 0 0.3 millimeter, but that's what we want when we want to just injure the, the, the surface of the skin, the epidermis, to allow for better absorption and penetration of molecules. So we have, a cartridge for the medical needling use, but we also have a cartridge just for delivery of solutions and just enhancing the absorption of topicals that we apply. So 
that would be the needling one. You can see that goes down to 2.5 mil uh, millimeter. But what's also nice about it is the design of the needles. It comes with nine needles in a flower shape. Okay. But what you also have is a nano peel. So that's another um, cartridge that really just um, scratches the stratum corneum. And, and you can pretty much see it as removal or exfoliating the stratum corneum. And that can be unique in combining with some of the chemical peels. As you know, for some of the chemical peels, we tend to degrease, for example. We want to have a better preparation so that the chemical peel can penetrate deeper. But in this case, we can do that with the nano peel. So we have three different cartridges, the nano peel, that would be unique for um, combination with chemical peels. If we have the micro pricking, that would be good for delivery of molecules. Um, and we also have the needling, which is the medical needling. So this is the nano peel. Okay, so that's pretty much superficial in the epidermis. Then we have the micro pricking. So this is what you would use, for example, if you have some pigmentation, melasma, you want to just deliver the tranexamic acid, or even with exosomes, you can just use this. Of course, you can also just use the needling one, but you don't necessarily need to go very deep because at a certain depth, when you use a medical needling and you start to get the pinpoint bleeding, that's when it um, possibly may interfere with the absorption and delivery of the molecule. So you don't really want the pinpoint bleeding. So even if you're using the medical needling one, you don't want it too deep, perhaps not deeper than one millimeter. But again, that depends on the thickness of the skin. Okay, and this is the medical grade needling, which basically means dermis. So if I talk about medical needling, that's very much a dermal wounding. Otherwise, if it's confined to the epidermis, it will going to be the micro pricking or the nano peel. So some results with this um, pen, you can see for hyperpigmentation. Now, I don't want to give the message that you can use needling alone for pigmentation. I think why would you do that when you can actually combine it with so many brightening solutions that we have, whether it's topical glutathione, tranexamic acid, vitamin C. There are a number, depending on where you live in the world and what license or certification um, the solution has, but it will make sense that you actually get the benefit of both combining the microneedling with the brightening solution. You can see here some very nice results um, around the eyes. Stretch mark is something that, you know, is always a challenge. And I find that I, I mean, when I use a lot of uh, fractional CO2 for stretch marks, I mean, it's fine in the skin type one and probably a skin type two, but skin type three and above, that's when you get into trouble with post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, prolonged redness. Um, and with needling, um, you have a lower risk of, of, of that. So that could be um, an advantage. So some, Right, now we'll talk about what everyone is talking about, and, and that is, regenerative medicine. And actually, if you look at the patient's requests are also changing because we've moved away from just fill me and fill the face with fillers. We are into the era of regenerative medicine. So what is regenerative medicine? Well, it's a, it's, well you can call it a new branch of, of aesthetic medicine or medicine that really is focuses, focusing on, on, on the repairing and replacing, regenerating. So we, 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 we want to harness our own body's mechanism in terms of um, introducing new components and re regenerating medicine. So that will come under things like PRP, stem cells, growth factors, exosomes, biostimulators, they, and the list is growing. And perhaps there are many other interventions that we don't know about. So when we talk about regenerative medicine, we're talking about you know, these products or these interventions that will then lead to some kind of um, stimulation from our, our skin uh, to ultimately get the results that we want. And this will be perfectly um, fine to combine then with microneedling. Because if you look at, for example, exosomes, which have become now very popular, although they have the license for topical application, but in terms of actual absorption, you're going to get much better absorption and delivery of the exosomes if you combine that with microneedling. So that is, and then you get the benefit of the microneedling effect. So one plus one is not gonna equal two, but it will gonna equal three in this case. So exosomes, um, actually, if you've come to AIMCAS four or five years ago, you probably wouldn't have heard much about exosomes, but now pretty much uh, most of the uh, sessions will in some way or another uh, talk about exosomes. So what are exosomes? These are very tiny little small uh, vesicles 
they play a very role in cell communication. So it's very much a cell-to-cell -cell communication. Uh, they have small size, so most of them will be around 100 microns, so they can be as small as 30 micron and as large as 150 micron. And this is interesting. Why is that? Because if you think about the diameter of the needle, which is typically going to be around 150 to 200 micron, that means that actually all these very tiny uh, particles of the exosomes can very easily penetrate through uh, the wounding that you generate through the needle diameter. So this is one of the questions. Well, will it be absorbed then if you do the needling? The answer is yes, because you need to know the diameter of the needle. And in this case, with, with, the, um, with the camper mats, it's definitely larger than the size of the exosome. So as you do the needling, then you have the open channels for the exosomes to be absorbed. And this is a perfect way of uh, delivering the exosomes. Now, I know that many use exosomes post-lasers. I think we don't know exactly how all the exosomes will behave at a certain temperature, because with some of the lasers where you're going to get temperatures of around 65 to 7 degrees in the dermis, depending on some of the exosomes, you might have, um, you know, you may not necessarily know how active these exosomes are going to be, unlike with the microneedling. So I think many of us who have access to both microneedling and lasers, I think it's easier for the patient and probably if all you want to do is deliver the exosomes, it's going to be more practical doing that with the microneedling. So role of exosomes, as I mentioned, cell communication, cell to cell communication, anti-inflammatory effect, angiogenesis, promotion of growth, reduction of oxidative stress, delivery of molecules. So the list is growing. And this is why you can't really pinpoint one particular condition where exosomes will be used. It's used now in rosacea, used in melasma, post uh, wound healing recovery. So uh, there are many uses for exosomes in medicine. Now, where do the exosomes come from? Plant-based, animal, um, mostly salmon and uh, fish, synthetic, um, but also uh, bacterial source and microbiome. And this is very interesting because um, I have been using a number of exosomes now for a while, but this is the one that I'm uh, using a lot of now. And that is because we also understand the importance of skin microbiome and skin health. I think that's something that we often neglected, but as dermatologists, we pay a lot of attention to the skin microbiome. So in essence, we want a healthy skin microbiome. And that is something that we can also achieve with our exosomes. And you can see here that this is one of the exciting areas of medicine where we actually can have exosomes extracted from our own skin microbiome. How cool is that? So instead of the exosome being from a plant or being from a salmon, it can actually be extracted from our own skin bacterial microbiome. So uh, this is the micro, this is the exosome that I'm currently using and currently combining with the microneedling. It's a Swiss technology. And I think that goes very well with Italy, you know, Italy, Switzerland. There is very harmony between them and their neighboring countries. Uh, and this is the, uh, this is the um, microbiotic exosome. So it's called exobiotic and, and essentially it's an exosome that is then derived from the skin microbiome. So by combining this with microneedling, then you have the effects of the uh, needling, but you also have the benefit of the exosomes, but also restoring the skin microbiome, which we know also has anti-inflammatory effect. Okay, you can see there's already a, a publication uh, looking at the efficacy of microneedling uh, plus exosomes, for, for example, in, in melasma in this case, which is one of the challenging conditions, but the list is growing. So combining microneedling and exosomes, Skin rejuvenation is definitely a, a growing field, accelerated wound healing. And there are many who, for example, if they're doing an intense treatment, will add in exosomes for a faster recovery. You obviously have the advantage of a improved absorption. When you combine that with microneedling, anti-aging effect, multiple skin conditions. Um, every time I go into a lecture, I hear more about, well, you can treat this with exosomes or you can approach this with Exosomes. So some of the examples of microneedling with regenerative medicine, scars, and I 
So all of these are a combination of microneedling with a form of regenerative medicine. So in conclusion, I think I have one minute left, so I'm finishing on time. Microneedling is affordable, is accessible, is, is easy to use, easier for the patient as well. Can do it on all skin types, skin type one to skin type six, um, all body uh, areas. It's not necessarily confined to the face. Um, we have the advantages of the microneedling. We know about regenerative medicine and exosomes. When we combine the two together, we get a synergistic effect. So with that, we'd like to thank you all for listening.